Welcome back, participants. We will now move on to our forum, The Game Changer of the Industry, moderate, moderated by Neil Chunke. In this session, find out how you can make a difference with data science. Without further ado, let us invite our panelists, Chai Yit Singh, Bon Yit Ping, and Abdul Fattah Rino to the stage. Please take note, our speakers are speaking as individuals, and they do not represent any organization. Hence, they accept no responsibility for any loss arising from any action taken or non taken by anyone using this material. Without further ado, I'll now pass the session to Neil to moderate this session. Um, 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 uh, no, you are muted. No, I think you might need to unmute. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so sorry. Didn't notice okay. that. I thought I was always on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No worries. I'll pass uh, it to you now. Thanks. Thanks, Queenie. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. So uh, my name is Neil, right? So I'm one of the board director for CFTA Society Malaysia, and I lead the digital financing team uh, in Maybank, right? So again, just one, one more time, I want to uh, welcome everyone to the sixth series of uh, CFA Society Career Carnivals, right? Uh, it's been very honored for us to have uh, so many sessions and so many support from everyone here. Yeah, so today's topic, data science. And this is something that is really close to my heart, right? And every day I'm working uh, around data and one of the day-to-day -day jobs that we are doing. And all of us should be really looking into data, right? So, but data science, is it really the game changer of the industry, right? So the question is, the data has been there here for so long. What has changed, right? What does it change and how would it change later, right? So. Today, we have uh, three very esteemed speakers here with us today to uh, go through with us what is data science and how we will change the industry going forward, right? So uh, on your bottom right, we have Fata from Quark. He's a young gun in the block, right? So we need to see how he used data in his portfolio strategy. And just to let everyone know, he's very good in hackathons as well, right? He's one of our winner in our Bloomberg CFA uh, hackathon uh, exercise that we had earlier of this year, right? And then we have uh, Woon from Kananga, right? That she transformed herself from a research analyst to today leading a data scientist team, right? So it's, it's something that we need to hear from her how she did it in that sense. And last but not least, this uh, this gentleman, uh, Ik Singh, right? His career is more colorful than most of us, right? From a most lucrative uh in the most highly industry of the banking, in the investment banking side, right? He decided to move on to uh, academic for a while. And then now with one of the, with two, uh, his career was now in two of the largest tech giant in the world, right? So we need to hear from him how he changed himself from uh, investment side to a uh, data side of stuff, right? So, but in order to kickstart today, I want to hear from everyone, right? Uh, what is data science, right? Then from there, we only go into uh, let the panel themselves to introduce themselves a little bit here and there, right? So yeah, Yiping, can I get uh, yourself to start up? What is data science from your perspective? Mm, yeah, so data science, you have to be quite distinct, right? Because it's different from data analysts as, as well as uh, data engineering. So data engineering is the technical section where you actually are quite uh, hands-on with uh, doing the pipeline of data from the source to the uh, to the uh, kind of uh, data kind of uh, uh, structures and uh, also um, organizing it into a nice database, which then can be used by the data analysts and the data scientists. Um, so the data analyst portion is actually informational, right? Uh, so uh, you are actually looking at uh, 
what kind of insights can be uh, taken out from uh, just the basic data. Uh, but to kind of level it up, then you go into data science where you are actually creating something that can add value to, the, uh, to your organization. Uh, hopefully uh, add to the bottom line as well. Lah. So I think, yeah, that's uh, what data science is for me. Yeah, yeah. Pata, how about yourself? In your view, what is data science to you? Um, right. Uh, for, uh, firstly, thank you, Neil, for the quick introduction. So the way I see data science is as if it's a field of study of its own. Like it's a very broad, broad field. Like think of it like an umbrella of everything data. Um, and then within that, within that uh, umbrella, then only you have a few other branches, like you know, data analytics, data visualization, or data engineering and whatnot. So um, it's a way for us to unify all these other fields into one one single concept. But at the heart of um, data science is actually um, the knowledge of statistics, uh, being meaning to say that uh, most of the data that is being processed or most of the um, data work that is being done would be relating to statistics. So uh, that's how I would see data in broad terms, data science, sorry. Yeah, all right. Yeah, Ising, would like to hear from you as well from a perspective. Okay, uh, at, at a high level, uh, I think data science, uh, I would see it this way, is a set of techniques uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be computing uh, techniques, okay? It can be accounting techniques as well, financial techniques. So a set of techniques that allows you to gain insights uh, into your business operations. Uh, but most importantly, it enables you to uh, make automated decisions at scale. Mm. Okay. Right? Uh, oh. Yeah, so... so yeah. yeah, so so sounds a bit like academic approach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, I think that's great, right? So I think we have different perspective from uh Woon from uh, Fata and Yusin, but I think uh Yusin have summed it up uh very very uh important point, right? Um, how do we do things at scale in which is data science going to brought us, right? So, but uh before we further deep dive into it, right? Can I get Yusin to maybe just introduce a little bit about yourself and how do you use data in your day to day career? day-to-day work oh okay uh well day-to-day -day, uh we we often look at our operations we get uh, all sorts of data so we know how uh my for example i run a team so how my team is doing on a daily basis how my customers are doing uh we have a dashboard to see all this um and then uh we also help our clients build solutions uh, in, in order to help them make uh, decisions uh, in a quick way. So, for example, in financial services, um, credit scoring is one solution uh, that, that is often uh, bandied about. Uh, the other one is uh, managing risk. You use machine learning to uh, identify uh, risky areas, and you can use this to uh, trade stocks as well. Okay. So, how about your career? Maybe introduce a little bit about yourself how you move from one to another, right? Yeah, so share with us a little bit of your journey so that oh. all of the people here will, will see why you switch from such a lucrative career to <laughs> something more data, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, one, one third better hours than uh, what an analyst had to go through. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I used to be a research analyst uh, analyzing stocks, uh, and then later on, I moved into uh, sales and trading. So the reason why I um, got into tech is uh, because uh, I my my team was the first team in Malaysia to actually introduce electronic trading. So we are the first uh, investment bank that is certified by, by Busa Malaysia to do uh, electronic trading. And during this time, a lot of clients from overseas in more advanced markets, they want to use algorithms to trade the market uh, instead of using pen paper to do analysis. Mm. Uh, so, so that was the start of it, um, and then later on, I went into uh, academia. I wrote uh, with some research papers. Um, then <clears throat> one day, I got a call from a recruiter from Amazon Web Services. You know, they, they read my research, so they said, "Can you come for interview?" So I said, "Really?" So I said, "Well, I just went for interview, and then I just found myself in the big data industry, <laughs> right smack yeah. in the middle of it." 
Yeah, so I've uh, been doing uh, that kind of role for a number of years already. Um, mm. And then uh, earlier this year, I moved to uh, Huawei Cloud and AI, uh, where I'm running the solution architecture and also the FSI team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, just to the participate in, in uh, together with us, right, you can see um, how important for us to be agile and willing to learn new stuff, right? Even if you from one industry, you can easily move on to the another industry, right? I think it's mm. a very, very good example here. Just keep yourself open and keep on learning, yeah? Yeah, yeah. keep learning. Everybody can do it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so can I, uh, yeah, you think I have anything to add on? No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. So keep learning, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thing. think the important point is keep learning, right? Mm. Yeah. All right, so, why not you introduce a little bit about yourself and talking about how data helping you? Okay. Uh, at the start, as well, Neil has uh, gracefully introduced all of us briefly. So I'll just uh, probably add a bit more history and also um, add something to that. Uh, so I graduated over a li little over four years ago. And then I uh, joined Coop, my current firm. Uh, so I started my career here, um, and then uh, for us, there's like uh, rotation programs uh, for us to pick and choose uh, which uh, particular department or which part uh, team that we fit fit in with the most. So for me, um, I am now placed in portfolio strategy. Uh, it was a very good fit for me because uh, of my background as well. I was doing economics. And then I am more of a high level kind of person. So looking at um, things from a bird's eye perspective. So at portfolio strategy, we look at um, various different asset classes that uh, our fund invests in. So um, the, the way that we would be looking at data day to day uh, is typically uh, relating to uh, financial data, such as um, price, uh, asset prices or also um, asset performance. And from this information, then uh, you are able to dissect different different information such as uh, the inherent risk available in different different type of asset classes. So that's uh, what we, we, we will be looking at uh, normally. Uh, reason being is that uh, at Portfolio Strategy, uh, we would be the one to help to determine the allocation of uh, of the fund, so we have to determine like which asset classes we should be, which asset classes should have a uh, certain set amount of capital um, uh, for us to invest in. So, uh, and this would involve you know like dealing with um, a lot of information, a lot of data, both looking at uh, different different events, um, even in uh, finance. You know, we have like different different types of uh, theories events or um, other types of uh, non normal normal activity so this would be the type of uh, things we will be looking out for in order for us to be able to build a resilient portfolio so th those are typically the information or uh, data that i would have to work with um, on the side probably we also look at you know um, other funds or other ma other managers yeah uh, the movement of their own fund prices or whatnot so yeah yep all right thanks Fata. All right. no so worries. so you are using the data in a different way, right? Although you may not involve in so much of engineering or not, but the data is still very important and it's still actually a part of the data science ecosystem that you need to understand how you use data in the right way, right? Even you use Correct. Excel, it's still a Correct. technique of uh, a data science. So maybe later we can deep dive a little bit more into that, right? So, uh, Yiping, maybe you also, it's your time to share a little bit about yourself and see how data within your day-to-day. -day. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I used to be a research analyst. I actually started from like the bottom to, from a research assistant. Uh, I was doing my CFA at the time. So I did, finished up my C, uh, CFA while uh, being a research assistant. And then I went up to analyst, went up to senior analyst. And I was looking at um, uh, a lot of things like, like maybe five, six sectors. And um, I found that um, the sector I was doing, looking at plantation was actually quite data intensive. Uh, there's so much that can be done with all this information. Um, and it uh, felt like the natural step forward to uh, kind of uh, go uh, go and uh, learn a bit more about uh, data science, uh, disciplines, techniques, machine learning and all that. Uh, so I actually did my uh, master's in uh, 
uh, basically masters in finance, uh, uh, concentration on fintech, uh, and uh, my company was actually very supportive. Um, yeah. So they actually uh, sponsored a bit of my uh, studies, and then after that, I came back and continued. And uh, it was kind of like um, uh, a good timing as well, because at the same time, um, we actually established our uh, digital business ventures uh, department, and uh, that's where I joined. Lah. Um, so since then, uh, I am uh, actually uh, working quite closely with uh, several projects, uh, our uh, data science uh, initiative, as well as uh, upcoming uh, robot advisory product, uh, yeah. especially in uh, that one helping helping uh, to make sure that the uh, robo advisor algos are performing uh, exactly as we want them to. Uh, helping to make sure that it's uh, actually running as specified and uh, it's not doing anything weird. So that's where the uh, kind of uh, uh, confluence of uh, data science and like, finance knowledge comes in really, really useful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so I think thanks for thanks even for the uh, introductions, right? So I think one point that is important here is, uh, is that you see uh, the participant. Yipin is working on something robo advisory, right? So it's actually it's still combination of your uh, investment uh, knowledge uh, from the CFA or from your your traditional degree on your corporate finance or whatnot, right? It's combination of that uh, knowledge, but coming in with a big data, which bringing you to the next level, right? So this is this is why uh, today uh, a lot of people are saying today uh, if you have one skill, you cannot survive in the career anymore, right? You need to learn uh, more than one then you only can be excel in where you want to do right so yeah but again we have been using data for so long right so i think since industry uh evolutions uh, back in uh many uh, 30 40 50 years ago all of us are using data right be looking at the performance be looking on how how effective of your plans and so on and so forth but why in the last three to five years right the data science becomes such a buzzword. What have changed and what make this uh, become so prominent now? Is it can I get you to share with us a little bit on this these portions? Uh the the main reason is actually the uh, cloud computing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh previously when you wanted to do big data, you have to uh provision your own uh, computers okay uh, and then you would have to write the code uh, that actually manages all the uh, synchronization between the machines and also to process the data okay mm -hmm. but uh, with the invention of uh, Hadoop in uh, and also uh, Spark uh, in 2014 um, it suddenly this is a paradigm change so together with cloud computing suddenly you are able to process data at scale uh, relatively easily <clears throat> um, and you didn't have to write uh, for example c c code you can do it in python um, and and that led to a you know a explosion of of usage yeah okay so if it, so continue from what Yixing is saying right do you foresee uh, what what do you see the next change after this, or what do you see uh, the progress on the data science area? Yeah, um, actually, the Python is actually quite interesting because I think the availability of code also really uh, made things uh, so much more accessible to everyone. So a lot of people actually start to uh, start to learn this, and then probably the natural next step is the auto ML uh, side lah. Uh, mm -hmm. where you don't even need to know how to code. Uh, you can just uh, be like, uh, have the data, maybe have like four or five sources of data nicely clean up, put it in, and then uh, set like four or five types of machine learning, and it will do everything for you. Uh, probably that's where you really see uh, the next uh, kind of explosion coming in. Coming in uh, okay. Especially okay. in terms okay. of machine learning insights. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I think before I go on to the next question, right? Um, for the participants, right? Uh, if you look into your platform itself, there's a Q and A sessions. Please feel free to drop your question there, so that uh, through the time, if we uh, see any interesting questions, we can uh, start and uh, keep on putting it in, right? All right. So I think uh, Pata, I understand that you may not use that much of uh, um, 
so called all the coding and whatnot. But through the hackathon experience that you had, right? So what do you find? How do you find the Python, right? I think part of the, the thing is you need to write some codes over there and so on, so on, right? Is it very hard for you to pick up that skill from your perspective? Um, okay, I think uh, the way I approach it is um, a bit different because uh, for me, I do have uh, one of my team members uh, is actually already quite experienced in doing Python. So uh, for me, it was okay for me to learn while doing because uh, the chemistry was good and we uh, I can always refer to him easily. Uh, but I would say that uh, the learning curve can be quite steep. Um, for me, myself, I have... Uh, very little coding coding knowledge. Uh, previously, my work has always been done uh, either through Excel or other means of Microsoft Office Suite, but not through uh, coding per se. But um, the hackathon journey has been interesting. Um, from applying the financial concept that we've learned, especially throughout the CFA program and also uh, what we experience in, in practice, uh, we try to codify and structure it in uh, one particular project or the tool that we've built. Um, there's still more to learn, uh, but I would say that Python has made it um, seemingly more uh, beginner-friendly in a way uh, because uh, it can be intuitive um, compared to other uh, programming languages. Uh, so in that sense, it helps uh, with learning. And also if you want to try to get on uh, the data analytics or data science train. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, so so that, that part that I continue with you, right? So uh, if you were to advise someone new, right, how would you want, you want them to, to start on the journey of learning some of these uh, techniques or where they, where they should start from? Mm. Uh, good question. Um, I think there's two ways about it, right? So uh, number one, it can be that you are a student or you haven't started working and you are looking to you know, enter the, the field or your industry, and you are specifically interested in data science. I think uh, if you are early on in a student, student life, you can either decide to take uh, data science-related courses or data analytics-related courses. Um, or if you are a student uh, uh, in the later years of your student life, you can also opt to, uh, in your free time, possibly look at, there's a lot of, uh, courses online as well that you can take up or I've seen as well like uh, my LinkedIn connections one of them posted uh, programs conducted by uh, professional uh, trainers so I think uh, those help as well but and then there's another 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 set of group of people right maybe these people are already working and they are looking to break into the data science field uh, for this group uh, there's two possibilities either one uh, you know, the company that you work for, actually, either they have a data science team or they have a team that works with data, or you want, or you may want to look opportunity elsewhere. But um, if your company already has done it, then you are able to learn on the job because you are already part of the company. And uh, then you have the opportunity to be practicing your the theories that you learn at the same time. So in that sense, you are able to uh, better appreciate uh you know like all the concepts that you learn or if you want to look into breaking into uh, other companies or other firms then your your steps will probably be similar to students whereby it helps if you take you know other courses or uh learn uh do it or your own self-learning in order for you to be able to uh better understand data science or better better understand like what type of uh use cases are there are out there for uh, if you are, you know, like very proficient in in data in data or data analytics. Yeah. So, so I think one of the important point that I gotten from Pata right is use cases, right? So I think uh, always think about what you want to solve before you jump into learning up the skill, right? Without knowing what is the problem statement that you are trying to solve, you may go into the wrong area to start off what you are trying to learn. Of course, maybe you can start with some basic learning such as uh, the NumPy uh, library for your Python and so on, right? But again, more importantly, find out what is the problem statement that you are trying to solve or use cases that you are trying to solve before you jump on, right? But if you think and you have anything to add on on what Mafata is saying? 
Uh, what 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 you what you just said is spot on. Uh, find the problem statement first. What is the problem that you're trying to solve? Uh, I can tell you a lot of uh, large enterprise. I don't want to say names, but really large enterprises. Uh, they said I'm going to I'm going to solve uh, problems by collecting all the data that I can into a platform, and I'm going to spend fifty million on it. Um, and then after that, no no conclusion. <laughs> okay, and, and no results. Okay, <laughs> okay so so what what uh, Chunke said is. Uh, you know, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? Then you go after it. Yeah. That's... yeah but what is your advice of um, those who want to start uh, jumping into learning, right? Any place that they can uh, find good material or any things that you, you they can recommend them to start looking into and so on? Uh, Coursera. A lot of good material and, and good stuff there. Um, mm. And then... Also, perhaps uh, eventually you can look at one of the large uh, cloud providers. Uh, so, uh, for example, my previous employer, uh, AWS, or and then Huawei Cloud is another one. Um, they have a lot of uh, training materials uh, within. If you go to their sites, uh, and this is also another place that you can start. Yeah. Okay. How about Yiping? Do you have any advice to those that want to uh, get started in a sense? Mm, definitely, uh, you definitely need to have your end goal. So you're uh, doing data science so that you are learning machine learning. Uh, so that's okay. But uh, if you have absolutely no base uh, for Python, then it will be very difficult. Lah, because at mm -hmm. the very least, you need to be able to uh, read uh, the code sample. There's so many code samples out there, but you need to read and understand. Uh, and then you can try to experiment by modifying. Um, you don't have to be an expert coder, I'm not, uh, but uh, you need to understand how how uh, the logic uh, of the programmer who's writing the code, and you need to understand enough to be able to modify and uh, make it your own. Yeah. So, uh, I think, I that, think the, the, yeah. The, 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 the way to, to look at it is, uh, first do your CFA, first finish your degree, <laughs> then do your CFA, complete the CFA, so you know how to analyze a company right and then what to look for then from there you can find ways okay i'm going to try to automate this and uh, you know using using computer code but you need to know what you're doing first yeah you look at it is that, CFA uh, first. <laughs> the cfa gives you the roadmap the framework, uh, the framework yeah the framework as to what you actually want to do or and then the data is means of like your tool or your a tool for you to execute the things that you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe I could summarize this particular portion before we move on, right? So, uh, number one, right? Know your topic, know your problem statement by having a framework in mind. Then only look into what are the tools that you want to learn, right? While on looking into what are the tools that you want to learn and do, right? Uh, I used to attend a class, right? Uh, for this one, a quite famous uh, professor called Philip Parker from INSEAD, right? He always say, uh, do these three things you want to learn, right? Number one, free material, go to YouTube, right? How to code and find problems they want. Number two, right? Go to this thing called uh, GitHub and the uh, so-called the Tensor, uh, sorry, Stack Overflow, right? You can get all sort of the material that you want, right? Then, then you just copy the code from there, then you can start experimenting out of it, right? So, and the, the last but not least itself is that really, uh, practicing with the problems that you're trying to solve that can help you day to day. I think that that's the simple way for you to start. And there's so many free so free resources out there for you to find out and, and, and get yourself better into it. Right. So yeah, I think I think let me get one of the questions, the number one questions un under the the Q and A first, right? So I think these questions, I think we can uh, all of three can can give your uh, perspective, right? But maybe this question I address it to Yixing, but the rest, please feel free to jump in, right? So the question comes like this. With the image of the edge computing power and cloud analytics, do you think the uh, CFA will be replaced by technologies and robot advisor? And in, in a way, will CFA lost a job one day, right? Maybe you think you could like share, share your view on this? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> the CFA will always be relevant. Uh, and I, I tell you what, technology is a tool. Uh, it's not the end. It's not the end. Mm. So, uh, money many uh, a good investment manager, uh, will always be needed. 
Okay, okay. Yeah. But I think the question is on the robo advisor, right? So robo advisor already building the algorithm and they are auto trading it. Why a uh, a person still required? Uh, the nature of business will will may change. Uh, but the the finance as a whole, there will be new jobs within finance. Mm. Even if some old jobs are uh, uh, go away. So uh, if you look at the olden days, right? Really olden days, we have people have typewriters, um, and then uh, uh, like uh, Yiping said, you know, uh, there used to be research assistants. Uh, I was a research assistant once. Um, now analysts don't have research assistant. You do your own research, <laughs> right? But then, you know, the, the 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 industry is still there, and then uh, salaries are, you know, as as high as ever, you know. So mm. no worries. Yeah. No worries. Great. Yep. But uh Yiping and Fata have any point of view for what in this case? Um yeah. So the way I look at it that um you know, even in Malaysia now we have uh certain applications, right, that are um using robot advisor technology. Actually I'm also invested in one. And it's very useful, you know, they have this neat framework and structure for you to invest in. But um in a sense, you have to understand that um, robo advising is a way of um, democratizing investments. You know, like letting people invest at very little uh, minimum upfront capital. But that's just one segment of the market, right? You have other uh, segments of uh, individuals with different levels of wealth, and you're not know, having. Um, at the end of the day, your clients are still uh, people and humans, and I do think that um, some things are more that are, you know, like more with higher complexity, like you would need uh, managers that are more capable or more uh, able to uh, cater for this group of individuals. So I think just like you, uh, you, you think I mentioned is that you have new branches uh, that may pop up. So you have like uh, different areas of finance that would be, hot and and then in in that sense cfa will always re, you know still remain relevant and you won't be uh losing out you know jobs to uh robo advisor or whatnot uh that being said um i do think that with the advent of technology uh it has helped uh even like financial analysts alike in in their jobs especially if you you know like want to try to analyze, like, uh, do mundane routines, like, you know, analyzing information, mass amount of information on day to day, then, you know, you have all these uh, tools or algorithms that may help you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If you have any point of view or not in this. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, the answer to that question is very much no, uh, because robot advisor, for one, it's the code is come up by people. Right? And uh, who are these people? I can tell you for the robot advisor we are doing. Uh, I have a CFA. Um, the guy who came up with our algorithm has a CFA. The guy who's going to uh, manage the uh, the entire uh, investing department has a CFA. And uh, I mean, wouldn't you be more comfortable uh, to to uh, invest in the robot advisor that you know was created by a CFA charter holder, right? Than someone who has no experience and doesn't know what he's talking about, right? So definitely no, it's an evolution. It's not the it's not a replacement. Yeah. I mean, just, just to share with everyone, right? So that uh, today, I think our CFA syllabus have incorporated uh, AI and ML into oh, the yeah. topic. We recognize it is important uh, as part of the overall topic, but it's definitely not going to be able to replace your fundamental understanding of the business nature and the fundamental understanding how the market reacts and so on. Yes, uh, maybe the technology will uh, replace some of the job that people is doing but again the knowledge will not be able to simply replace by just an algorithm itself yeah i think that that's one one of the important point to share with everyone yeah so uh i think uh, in the uh q a there right i think this question we have uh, spoken it before right but uh, maybe we just take it on again for people without basic programming and statistic background is it possible for them to learn data science on the job, right? I think uh, the answer is uh, definitely yes, but I, I think maybe Yiping is one of the best person to, to share how do you uh, move from a research analyst to lead the data science team in a sense, right? So how your on-the-job have helped you in this case? Um, 
on the job, it helps in the sense that it gives you some targets to move to. Uh, but whether you can learn it or not from like a base of nothing, it really depends um, on how much effort you want to put in. Um, so it's not impossible, uh, but if you're very busy, then we're very hard. Uh. So it's, it's more towards uh, whether you would like to put your time or invest your time in taking it on, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so maybe Isang, I would like to ask uh, this mm -hmm. question to you. Let's say, if, if let's say uh, in the future, if we do not put a lot, uh, let's say from the financial industry perspective, right? If we the, the, the person doesn't put a lot of effort in learning up how to understand data, can they survive in the new norm? Yeah, going to be tough. <laughs> uh, put put in the effort is worth it. Uh, start with uh, you know basic programming and statistics. It's actually not not very difficult to to learn up the basics, right? If you do a little bit of work every day after work, within I think six months, I think you are you are you you should know uh, quite a bit already, and and uh, should be more a lot more advanced than most people in your in your industry. So six months, think, think of it as doing one CFA level, you know, uh, and then from there, you can uh, learn more. Okay, okay. Yeah. Not, not too difficult, not too difficult. Not too, not too I difficult. encourage everyone to do it. <laughs> Great. And, and, and it's free, and it's free. So do some <laughs> online courses, it's free. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay, uh, but you think maybe let me ask you the next, uh, a bit more fundamental questions, right? I mean, just now we are talking about uh, the... Uh, data science is almost like umbrella of a lot of stuff, right? So there is uh, data analytics, uh, so there is the data engineering, there's data visualizations, there is so-called the analytic portion of it and telling the story, right? Actually, do we need to learn all or we can depending on other people to help us to do some of the work? Uh, it, it depends on how far you want to go in the industry. If mm -hmm. you want to be the best bar none, you have to learn it all. And not only learn it or master it or uh, but uh, not everybody wants to you know go go that direction you know uh, you you can you can do a you know I can focus on a narrower sub sub uh, sort of uh, area uh, and if you're happy there uh, you know why not. Mm, okay 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 so so i think why i brought up that question right is is because for the next uh, question i want to back to you you think just some brought up a uh, very interesting uh things on uh, auto ml basically auto machine learning right so so i think the thing itself is that uh in order for you to do the machine the, i think the building the models uh coming up with algorithm i don't think it's the hardest things right it, the, the portion that's hardest how do you clean up your data to put into the the, the model itself. So, um, so isn't that someone should start learning a little bit of data engineering so that they know how to clean up the data before they even think about uh, using an auto ML platform in the future? Yeah, I don't think data science is so advanced in Malaysia that um, uh, everything is packaged nicely for you to use immediately. <laughs> so, so oh, yeah, yeah, you do need to learn, but it's not difficult with uh, with Python love from my experience. Um, and yeah. there's a lot of tools also um, that that can help you do this. Um, so uh, I guess the challenges is um, understanding, learning the code, uh, and also uh, having reliable enough data source. Okay, okay. So uh, when you say auto ML, maybe you can uh, just share with everyone a little bit what is auto ML, right? So that uh, everyone can can do some research after this. Um, I think yeah. a lot of the uh, cloud providers do have these functions nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's a few steps process, right? So uh, you can give it, provide the data. Um, and then uh, the next step is it, you kind of uh, uh, give it a few kind of options of what machine learning uh methods you want to test through, then it can uh, scan through um, all the permutations or the variables uh, to optimize it for you. And then after that, it will come up with a result, uh, which is the model that you will uh, then implement uh, with your business. Probably, okay. I think the would uh, know, know uh, the most about this. Yeah. So, uh, you think you want to share a little bit more on the auto ML part so that everyone can, can, can uh, a little bit more understanding? Okay, the the value uh, in, in data science today uh, and the people who 
uh, basically the people who have the highest pay, uh, right? <laughs> are the people who can put the whole pipeline together. Mm. That means mm. build a, a complete solution end to end from uh, call, uh, ingesting the, uh, okay, so data science, there are, there are several steps. First is that there's an ingestion phase. You need to ingest the data. Then you need to transform the data or clean it up if you like. Uh, clean up and transform, okay? Uh, and then you need to be able to store the data in the way that you need to use it. And then finally, you have, uh, you, you will uh, use tools like a visualization tool to look at it. Uh, or you also put it into a machine learning pipeline. Right, mm -hmm. uh, and after that, you need to integrate this into your existing mm -hmm. system. So, if you're a bank, you need to be able to integrate this in your banking mm -hmm. system. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. if you're an e-commerce e company, you integrate it into your mobile app and your daily operations. Mm -hmm. So, you need to complete the end-to-end -end cycle. And the people who can do this uh, will get the highest pay uh, today. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but you need to start somewhere. You need to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. You you can't do one shot. You know you you take you yeah. some years to, to learn up. So uh, data science is ju you just keep in mind that data science is just one uh, area, uh, but there's uh, more to it. Uh. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and take your time to learn, uh, enjoy the process. No, no, no rush. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So I think this is, uh, uh, the next question is, is actually should be uh, more interesting to everyone, right? So today, uh, a CFA holder or whatnot, we are kind of very focused in one of the industry, which is basically your, your financial industry, be it in a corporate, your, in the corporate finance team and whatnot, right? Focusing on M&A, you issue bonds and whatnot. But when you move on to data science, right? The question is, the data science skill, is it easily transferable across industry, right? Fata, what, what's your view on this? Um, for me personally, I've only been uh, in one industry, but having talked to peers and also uh, looking at other my other acquaintances, uh, yes, it seems like uh, the skills are transferable. So uh, because the knowledge is somewhat um, can be applicable to different different industries. So for example, right, like uh, time series analysis when you work with data. Uh, it can be used for our stock prices, or it can also be used by healthcare professionals uh, looking at, you know, COVID cases or our vaccination rates um, over over a span of time. So in that in that sense, uh, yes, it is a very useful skill to have, very useful knowledge to have, and you are you have the edge uh, and mobility to move across. Uh, different sectors and industries. Okay, okay. Uh, Yipin, you have any point to add on this? Or... Mm, no, I think uh, uh, Fata summed it out. It's just um, if you have the knowledge base, it does help your job a lot. So if you want to transfer into other industries, uh, sure, you have your uh, programming basics, but you also need to know enough about the industry lah, that you're targeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so I think uh, let me take one more question from the Q and A, right? So I think this is somewhat we uh, briefly cover it through, lah, right? But again, maybe uh, Isen, can you help to uh, put in more uh, more into detail so that in a more structured way? So the question comes like this: Hi, thanks yeah. for the variable sharing. May I know what are the data analytic tools frequently using by CFA analysts in today's digital transformation area? Okay. Uh, I think I will start with uh, any of the uh, Hadoop is obviously the main uh, solution uh, for big data. Uh, the programming language typically used uh, will be Python to control uh, everything. Um, and then in terms of machine learning, there, there are so many. Uh, personally, I use, uh, if I build machine learning models, I will use PyTorch uh, a, a lot. Uh, on a smaller scale, you can use uh, things like scikit-learn. Mm. Okay, so so I think uh I think there's a lot of uh platform uh simple tools out there, right? I think you can just download a, a lot of free software. I mean, for example, you can look into things like Anaconda or you want those stuff that you can start actually manipulating data from there already. I think those those are some of the things that you can yeah. start looking into it, right? Yeah. Uh, and and really just go YouTube. Go uh, Stack Overflow, go to GitHub, right? They can tell you a lot, a lot of answer already, right? So hmm. use Google as your best guru. Yep. Right? 
<laughs> yeah. So, uh, maybe let me ask one, uh, the, maybe the uh, last question before I go, go jump into the rest, right? So, it's more for me. So, so in a way, right? So, when we're talking about uh, data science, we are actually using a lot, a lot of data in that sense, right? And in a way, uh, people in the industry are saying, people like your Facebook or people like your Google or back in our home here, your Grab or your Shopee, right? Actually, knowing you yourself better than you yourself knowing you. I mean, in a way, right? Those companies knowing Neil better than Neil knowing himself, right? So is there something along the data privacy and data ethics stuff that we really need to concern about uh, throughout all these all these different, different companies? You think maybe can get you started uh, on sharing some of these thoughts? Uh I guess uh, in general terms, uh, if you don't use it for bad intentions, I think I think it's it's uh, generally okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. okay. The intent, the, the, you know that the intent it shouldn't be bad. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Yeah. But uh, I think you are in the uh, younger generation. I I feel I uh, my understanding is. Uh, the younger generation actually is more aware of the value of data, right? So when you give up data, you always expect something, right? So what are the something that you're expecting from those, those companies? Um, I'm not sure if, uh, if you guys are aware, but there's this actually one uh, documentary on Netflix, quite interesting. It's called uh, The Social Dilemma. So yeah. they actually, uh, you know, like try to break down... Um, how uh, our data is being used by, you know, social media companies. And wh what they do with our data is that they try to construct uh, different, different profiles, like, you know, or demographics in order for them to tailor or customize their products. So in a way, it does, um, what you say is uh, quite true that, you know, some of the companies, these companies, they may actually know us better than ourselves. Um, but it's a bit tricky because the reason is uh, when you use these services, you are expecting, you know, like uh, you're able to use their services for free of charge. Uh, you're able to connect with your friends uh, without having to pay at all apart from your uh, internet bills. But uh, when this, you know, like there's no free lunch, uh, as we say in finance. And when these services are free, it means that we are actually the product. So our data is the one that's being churned out uh, day in, day out. So they would know, like, you know, uh, in this geography, like, uh, what do what would be a topic uh, that would get the most amount of clicks and whatnot. So, uh, and it also goes back to what Yusheng was mentioning, you know, the intent of you, the use of data. Uh, it's a bit scary if, you know, uh, there's malicious intent behind. So, for example, to... Uh, alter or influence uh, possibly political elections or, uh, you know, like using it to bring people into a rabbit hole of conspiracy theories or whatnot. But at the same time, if it's being used for good, say, for example, you know, you have uh, information of um, people that, you know, let's say this area would need more help uh, than others, uh, then, yeah, it, it, it will be helpful if that's the case. So um, I think from a consumer point of view, consumer user point of view, we expect like uh, these big companies or this corporate, they use our data responsibly. Uh, they have a lot of power in their hands and they use it for the, uh, the betterment of community rather than using it for malicious intent. Okay. Yeah, so I think well, we almost uh, we really slightly overshoot the time. But let me take one last question from the Q&A. After that, we open up to three of you to to uh, give us some last word. Yeah. So I think this, this question has to be answered because we are in the CFA forum, right? So maybe I can get Yiping to help me to answer these questions. How do CFA certifications help in a career of data science in banking financial services? Yeah. So maybe just answer the last questions. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. Of course, it's uh, very helpful. So I was already uh, saying just now, like I'm helping in uh, sorting out the algorithms for robot advisory. Uh, and uh, CFA uh, really provide this uh, background or basic knowledge uh, 
for me uh, and also um, a lot of frameworks actually um, to the ways the ways that you want to think about investing uh, the ways where like the ways how professional uh, investors or professional fund managers actually manage a big money that you can bring it to the masses um, so these are things that uh, it's not easy to learn without a formal program so that's actually how uh, CFA did um give a very good uh basis um and as well as the uh once you have the charter you also have the uh research available to you um that's actually very very useful as well uh like a lot of times i kind of forgot something and uh, look, look it up on the website and uh, all the refreshes are very helpful as well yep all right <clears throat> so i think it, it's going to come to our end uh, our session soon right but uh why can I get uh, all our panel to uh, share their last thought or last word to the participants around our topics today? Ising, can I get uh, yourself to start first? Uh, if you're interested in this uh, field, uh, continue to study, uh, work at it, uh, and uh, you will find a place for yourself. Yeah. Fata, how about yourself? Um, I think uh, it's an exciting time to be joining uh, this field. Um, you know, from uh, what was mentioned by Yi Sheng earlier, uh, there's a, and also Yi Ping, there's a lot of uh, software developments and, uh, you know, improvements in technology that we probably only, like, you know, scratch the surface and it's only going to evolve and uh, get bigger as time uh, goes by. So definitely, if you're interested, then uh, try to do, you know, work as hard as you can. Uh, try to learn as many courses as you can in order for you to be able to grasp at least the foundation of, you know, data science. Yeah, uh, yeah I think we sum it up very well. Um, it's uh, very much a growing industry. It's not very huge in Malaysia right now, but that's why it's growing. Uh, I think uh, in the next few years, any bank is going to be looking for uh, people who have this uh, kind of skill set uh, especially programming is not something that is a yes yes or no, you, you know or you don't know, right? So um, it's definitely growing. Uh, there's definitely a lot of potential. So uh, yeah, keep at it. Lah. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. Maybe let me just sum out the whole session, right? So I think number one is that, is that why uh, data science or the data what becomes so uh, prominent today is because the evolutions of technology, the compute power have increased tremendously. So everyone can have access to that very, very simple. That's number one, right? So number two is that when you want to get into this area, whether you know the problem statement that you want to solve, right? You need to get to the thought that you know the problem statement to, to solve, then you only get into learn what are the uh, programming languages or what are the uh, solution that you want to use to get your data science uh, things work right. And lastly, as a hiring manager myself, I can assure you there is a lot, a lot of opening uh, in this field. And even if you are interested, you can always uh, speak to uh, my company, right? Or even myself, uh, you can uh, get certain opportunity out there uh, very, very soon. And we are short of data scientists for sure. This one, I can assure you, we don't have enough people in, 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 in the industry right now. So anyone who able to get some of it, learn out of it, there will be opportunity for you. If you come together with a CFA, you may be making yourself uh, even more uh, prominent or to be priority of hiring in the future, right? Yeah. With that, thank you so much for our active speaker and thank you for your attention for throughout the last uh, about one hour, yeah? And all the best in your future. Thank you and take care. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Neil and panelists for the eye-opening discussion. So to close off the day three of Career Carnival, we have a mentoring session at our social launch. So yesterday mentoring session was a very success and with all the tables are fully occupied. And I know many of you still have a lot of burning questions for our speakers. And we have great news for all of you. Our speakers have agreed to stay back for the mentoring session. Like the mentors, they will be assigned with a table each. So feel free to direct to your, uh, your questions there. Here are some guidelines for the mentoring session. There will be a total of nine mentors. Each table will be led by a seasoned mentor in the industry. This is your opportunity to pick their brains and ask them anything and everything about the consulting industry. As usual, participants will be moved to the social launch. 
for a better mentoring experience will, will keep the group small and a mentor will only have five mentees on a table. So we highly encourage you to turn on your cam and unmute yourself to speak with our mentors. Our team may consider expanding the table capacity should the need arise. When we move to the social watch later, please, please wait for a few minutes for our mentors and speakers to be seated. The speaker's table will be revealed later. So once they are seated, we'll notify you when our mentors are ready via the chat box and alert tab. So do keep an eye on our announcement and in the, our announcement in the alert tab and the chat box. If you can get a spot on any mentors table, you can also go to our CFA Society Malaysia table to speak to us. Lastly, I'd like to give everyone a gentle reminder. Don't forget we still have a few days to go on. Stay tuned for our, our upcoming session. We'll be having PwC and PNB for the employer engagement session. So, uh, and a forum on evolution of banking in the digital revolution and followed by a mentoring session with mentors with banking experience tomorrow. So see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. as our event will start at 4 p.m. sharp. So, and this mentoring session will end up at 8 p.m. While well, you may continue your conversations at the table, but please do respect your mentor's time if they need to leave. We hope you have an insightful session. Thank you.